The United States of America dropped a nuclear bomb on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This crippled Japan and eventually led to their demise and defeat. And the Japanese Imperial General Headquarters to sign the instrument of surrender at the places indicated. Japan signed the final surrender, officially ending World War II. Japan lost control of the Korean Peninsula. Later, at the Potsdam Conference, the peninsula was divided into the North and the South. The Soviet Union in control of the North, and the United States in control of the South. Before America's Congress, President Truman makes the most momentous speech since the death of Franklin Roosevelt. He declares political war on Soviet Russia. In American eyes, Britain is no longer the bulwark against communist expansion. Great Britain finds itself under the necessity of reducing or liquidating its commitments in several parts of the world. Truman gives a speech stating that the United States will help and fight with any country that is at risk from communist countries or influence. The speech popularly becomes known as the Truman Doctrine. Despite this, the U.S. continues to withdraw troops out of South Korea. An uprising in Jeju, South Korea takes place, where South Korean soldiers attack Koreans sympathetic to Kim Il-sung's North Korean communist regime. More than 14,000 people were killed. The Republic of South Korea is established. Months later, the Chinese People's Republic is also established, with help from the North Koreans. This bond between the two countries becomes important later. The Soviet Union, which is very supportive to North Korea, asks to invade South Korea. Kim Il-sung agrees, under the assumption that the U.S. is not interested in South Korea. A full-scale attack against South Korea is launched. Tanks and infantry from North Korea cross the 38th parallel and meet little resistance. This marks the start of the Korean War. The United Nations and the United States both disapprove of North Korea's actions. All members of the United Nations are called under Resolution 83 to supply military aid to South Korea. Sigmund Rhee orders the Bodo League Massacre, also known as the Summer of Terror. This was a government-sponsored massacre of over 100,000 people believed to be sympathetic to North Korea or anybody communist. The executions were performed without trial or any evidence. However, the next day, the South Korean capital of Seoul is captured. A day later, former World War II General Douglas MacArthur arrives in South Korea to take command of U.S. and U.N. forces. General MacArthur is given the okay by President Truman to go after North Korean troops, even if it means to pass over the 38th parallel. On September 23rd, South Korea recaptures Seoul and President Syngman Rhee reestablishes his government. General MacArthur assures President Truman that there will be no Chinese involved with the conflict. However, on October 25th, 100,000 Chinese soldiers sneak into North Korea and defeat the South Korean army at Pukchin. On November 1st, China officially joins the war by helping the North Korean army when they are overwhelmed by the United States and United Nations troops. This allows the North Korean army to retake Seoul a second time. By this time, the Korean War has reached a stalemate. President Truman starts peace talks at Panmunjom, along with his new military commanders. However, the negotiations stalled and fighting continues along the 38th parallel. We have stopped the shooting. That means much to the fighting men and their families. And it will allow some of the grievous wounds of Korea to heal. Therefore, I am thankful. Finally, after more than two years of negotiations, the two adversaries signed an armistice, officially ending the war. From August to early February the next year, prisoners of war were exchanged. 83,000 North Koreans and Chinese were sent back, however 22,000 refused to go back in their communist countries. 
There had been attempts earlier to merge the two occupation zones back into a single and united Korea. However, these attempts proved ineffective. Each side had very different views, and neither was willing to concede. By the summer of 1984, the increasingly hostile and independent states of North and South Korea are officially established and recognized. Something had to happen. Since the zone for the American occupation had to be picked, it made no sense economically or geographically that the 38th parallel was decided upon, and was accepted without too much dispute. Most surprisingly, Soviet Union leaders also accepted it. What followed was the creation of the Demilitarized Zone, or the DMZ, in an agreement between North Korea, China, and the United Nations. This was part of the Korean Armistice Agreement. The DMZ is a region on the Korean Peninsula that separates North Korea from South Korea, which loosely follows the 38th parallel. Territory on both sides were incorporated in the ceasefire line. It is around 160 miles long and 2.5 and miles wide. An area called the Joint Security Area was also established and has since been the site of negotiations between the two Korean countries. However, the armistice is still informal. Tensions are high, and this leads to the development of the Cold War and the Vietnam War. To this day, both sides say that they were victorious, and Korea remains extremely divided. As a result of the war, both countries suffered extreme loss of life and damages to their economy and infrastructure. Although South Korea was able to get aid from the U.S. and industrialize, North Korea remains the poverty-stricken economy in crisis. Other countries were also greatly affected. As a result of the war, the Soviet Union lost over 1,500 square miles of territory. Their economy was also greatly negatively affected. However, they had successfully kept part of the Korean Peninsula communist. They gained experience fighting and was able to test new weapons. They also captured lots of American technology and was able to make their own as a result. China is also greatly affected. The war brought China onto the world stage and also showed how much power they had. It also caused disparity between China and the U.S. that last for many more decades. In the U.S., the war cemented that the U.S. would try and prevent the spread of communism. More and more U.S. citizens began to be afraid of communism, and the Korean War is used as an example of what happens as a result of it. The war also left no doubt in people's mind that the U.S. was a strong world power. Possibly most importantly, the United Nations is affected as well. It showed the power of the UN and what it was capable of. Around the world, countries began to respect the United Nations more. The story of the Korean War is tragic, but important. It shows what happens when two nations with very opposing views need to come to a compromise and what happens as a result. It can even be argued today that North and South Korea are still at war. Kim Il-sung and Syng Min Ri were both nationalists and trying to do what they thought was best. However, their two different ideologies were very different, causing their political views to clash, leading to millions of deaths. Even today, the conflict and compromise still affects us drastically. With threats of nuclear war and increasing tensions, we still very much feel the impact of the Korean War today.